Welcome to your senior year of high school. It's taking quite a while to get here, though at least some of that time has probably flown by very quickly, and this year will too. 12th grade is the year that all your hard work in school and your future plans finally come together. In addition to finishing out your academic preparation and requirements, your year will be filled with many tasks to help you launch beyond high school. Whatever your future plans, there will be a lot of information and tasks to keep straight. We are here to keep you on track. Hi, my name is Stephanie Jimenez Castro, and this is what you need to be doing as a 12th grader right now. In this video, rather than overwhelming you with details, we will be covering highlights of things to take care of over the year. There is much to be aware of, particularly if you are applying to college. So we've also linked a detailed checklist on our website in the description of the video. With that checklist, there are also many links embedded to guide you to other relevant videos. As a senior, you've got several years of experience with high school under your belt. Even though you've pretty much got this down, there is not a more important year than this year to get off to a good start. As with every high school year before this one, the keys to success start with these fundamental recommendations. First, meet with your high school counselor as early in the year as possible. Review your progress towards graduation to make sure you are on track. Look over your transcript to make sure everything is correct. Share your future plans so your counselor can make helpful suggestions on the next step. If applying to colleges, uh, share your college list, collaborate on the timeline for your applications, clarify any concerns and ask about scholarship options. Be sure to attend fall events organized by the counseling office such as college fairs and visits, financial aid and scholarship sessions or other special presentations. Also pay attention to newsletter announcements posters, other media for the announcement of events and scholarships. Your counseling office puts on a ton of information and it is up to you to grasp that information and make sure you use it. If you're not sure about something, be sure to ask someone. Second, challenge yourself academically. Throughout high school, we've recommended building some challenge into your schedule, and senior year is no different. In fact, making sure you've set up a productive schedule will help you stave off the feeling of senioritis. If you're planning for college, maintain a college prep schedule and try out courses that will provide you with college credit such as AP or dual enrollment at your local community college or university. In addition, everyone can benefit from taking career-based classes to keep learning new things. Third, get good grades. Your grades will still contribute to being a good candidate for college and scholarships. If you're worried about whether your GPA is not good enough, you still have time to bring it up and to show your initiative in doing so. Whether you are applying for a job, college, or anything in between, maintaining a good GPA shows you're dedicated to doing a good job. And the fourth very fundamental recommendation is to keep reading. Reading is a life skill that will make everything easier if you keep the wheels greased. For those going to college, this is what you'll be doing the most in your studies. So make sure you're ready for college level textbooks it will help ease your stress later. In general, your senior year can be broken into the season of fall, winter, and spring, and each has its important elements, with fall being heavily focused on college applications and filling out FAFSA. Your timeline will be largely based on your college's application deadlines and whether you choose to apply to meet their early deadlines, usually in October or November, or their regular deadlines often scheduled between late December and early February 
salary, our generalized suggestion is to, if you're able, have your applications ready by October 15th. Doing so will allow you more time to focus on financial aid and scholarships. If you have any questions about the different timelines and terminology, uh, click there to watch our video explaining them. Besides relishing the fun events that you'll be sharing with your friends you've known for so long, so much of your senior year is about setting yourself up right for the future. No matter what you are planning to do, more than likely you will face an application process of some sort, deciding how to pay for your training or education, and you will need to follow through in whichever process you are engaged in to make sure it turns out the way you want it to. We will dive into more details about applying to colleges and universities in a moment. For those looking into options such as community college, trade school, apprenticeship, the military, or possibly taking a gap year, while there is still a process to go through, it is often not as complicated as college applications. However, much like college applications, the sooner you apply or talk with recruiters, the more access you will have to programs of your choice, along with financial aid and potential scholarships. For those tackling college applications, while millions of students go through this process every year, just like your college list, it is individualized to you. Your process will be individualized according to you and your colleges. We would do our best to draw a basic timeline and make some stock suggestions. Here if other unanswered questions come to mind, talk with your counselor or ask them in the comments below. Uh, we also highly recommend contacting college admission offices to get their individualized input on your situation. The typical components of college applications include the application itself, test scores and an official transcript, a resume or a record of your activities, letters of recommendation, and a college essay. Check with your colleges about their specific requirements as they will vary. For example, one school may be test optional and not require SATs or ACT scores, while another might require your test scores be sent directly from the college board and ACT corporation. A university might recommend a college essay rather than requiring one, while another college may require more than one essay. You will be striving to pull all of these components together to meet the application deadlines you decide upon. To do so, work backwards from your due date and organize your time to work on these different pieces because these two things rely on other factors and people. Start early in August while registration for the testing or the test retakes and approach the teacher, coach, or others you've identified about writing a letter of recommendation. From there, work to fulfill the application requirements of the colleges you're applying to. If you have false scholarship applications in the works, make sure to do the same for them. If you can, try to finish as much as you can a week before any deadline so you can have time to make sure everything is correct. Also, order your official transcripts from your counseling office at least two weeks in advance so they have enough time to process it before your deadline, particularly if it needs to be mailed. Also, slated for fall is to file your free application for federal student aid or FAFSA. This form is required for you to qualify for any financial aid and it is also a required part of any scholarship application. The earliest you can apply is October 1st. Every student should fill this out whether you think they will give you money or not. Once you've completed these major milestones, save all your work in a file, electronic or paper. Take a deep breath and pat yourself on the back. You now have a deep understanding of applications. You have solidified documents such as letters of recommendations and a resume, and you hopefully have a college essay that you can tweak for other uses such as scholarships. As the winter months of December through March settle in, you are waiting to hear on your acceptance status and our financial aid packages. You can now turn more attention to scholarship applications. 
the process for scholarships will be much the same for colleges, though it's important to note that not all organizations that offer scholarships will be as tech savvy and you will likely encounter some paper applications requiring copies of documents and letters. Be thorough, neat, and timely submitting your applications. Remember, these people who want to give away their money for only the cost of an application. Be respectful of their benevolence and send a thank you note. As you do start hearing from colleges, it will be time to make some final decisions. You might go with your original college plan or you might shift gears. The deadline to let colleges know whether you will be attending or not is spring, usually on May 1st. A deposit will be required to hold your spot in their freshman class and you will start receiving information on orientation, housing and advising and selecting your courses. Closer to home, spring is a time to make sure you are finishing your high school courses without succumbing to senioritis to keep up your final grades. Remember that colleges will require your final transcripts be sent to them so they can see how you finished. Make sure to check with the counseling office about the final transcript process. In spring, you should also be preparing for AP and IB exams, where doing well can result in college credit being granted for your scores. Remember to include your code of your college or university so that your scores can be considered. During the summer months, be on the lookout for notifications from your college regarding any missing documentations they may need, housing, registration, and possibly a message from your new roommate. Start making a list of what you will need to furnish your dorm room so you can acquire what you need over the summer. But wait, did we forget something of importance here? Of course, we did it. Congratulations on your graduation from high school. All your hard work has paid off. Remember, as the high school chapter of your life closes, a new one begins. If you found this video useful, hit the like button and perhaps consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.